Okay, let's continue with wave optics. Now, we're going to go look. We're going to take a look at thin films, and I'm sure all of you remember um, Snell's law from the last, right, the last uh, test. N one sine theta one equals N two sine theta two right Snell's law um, and so basically if we look at a thin film the way all materials work so light is going to come down here some of it you know, some of it is going to reflect something is going to refract bounce off the material underneath come back up and come out right and depending on what the um, let me just draw again. Depending on what the difference in path length for them is, well, we're going to ignore that bit. Basically, look at this piece down here, right? Depending on what the difference in path length is for them. So this is some number of lambda n, and we talked about lambda n, which is lambda in free space divided by the index of refraction of the material. So this is some number of lambda n. So depending on how many, how long that path link is, you can, can, can get constructive or destructive interference off of this thin film layer. And if we, if we look at that, all right, if we look at that, if you get a total of, um, a full wavelength or an integer number of wavelengths between these two, then what governs things is what's happening at the boundary. And if you get half a wavelength between them, you also get what governs things is what's happening at these boundaries. And so let's take a look at what I mean by that. So for some of these, if 2t, this distance, right, is an integer multiple then there'll be constructive interference and for others if 2t is a half multiple of inter of lambda n uh, an odd multiple odd half multiple of lambda n one half three s five halves then um, we'll get destructive interference but all of that depends on exactly whether n one is greater than n two or n two is greater than n three or vice versa right as you go through it all, it depends on the thickness of the wavelength, the film thickness, the wavelength of light, and the refractive indices. Um, and all of that sets up what your actual interference is, or con whether it's constructive or destructive. Right? So, if we have this, n2 greater than n1, then there is a lambda over 2 phase shift right here. That means we need a half integral here to get constructive interference. However, if we have n3 greater than n2, that means there's another half phase shift, half wavelength phase shift here, All right? Which puts us back at we need um, m lambda in order to get constructive interference. So because that all gets up to be, I mean, because that all seems to be a little confusing, I put together what in um, engineering we would call a truth table, right? So if n2 is greater than n1 is false and n3 greater than n2 is false, then you get constructive interference from this equation and destructive from this equation. If one of these is true but not the other, right, then the roles swap. But if both, is tr both are true, then you're right back to where we started at. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a matter of here, if this is true, then the reflection is in phase with the incoming light, and the reflection here is in phase with the incoming light, and so this is looking for a single or a multiple lambda distance here. These two are saying it was either reversed here or there, and by reverse, what I mean is the electric field was vertical, let's say, let's 
think of the thin film as here. The electric field incoming was vertical. And then when it bounces back, it's the other way. It reverses direction. Because it's reverse direction, that's like going through a lambda over 2 distance. So it's a lambda over 2 phase shift. All right, so if you have one phase shift, that swaps the roles of the equations. Then if you have two phase shifts, that puts us right back where we started. Is all of that clear? Okay, um, on to the next bit.